So James Blake will serve first. The start of this match was delayed almost 20 minutes. There was a medical emergency in the stands here just at the end of the first warm-up session. The players went inside, came back out, warmed up a second time. Blake, as you mentioned, two titles this year already. Also, two finals. Those this is his long. fifth final of the season. It's really been a fantastic run for him. Except in the majors. Left. Blake was a quarterfinalist last year at the U.S. Open. of both players and tomorrow when the new rankings come out both men will move up Blake win or lose today will be five in the world Roddick if he wins will be nine loses he'll be ten Blake, a very athletic player, very much an all-court player as well. That's a solid-looking volley. Didn't execute perfectly, though. Clip the tape, still 43. Blake will use his foot speed to get into the net. Nice move forward by Blake on a big forehand. He goes behind Roddick with the volley, who stays home and inflicts that with his left wrist just in, I mean, perfectly inside the line. Some nice athleticism by Roddick as well there. Left. Second service. Quickly, uh, this game goes from a, it looked like an easy one for Blake to break point. <laughs> and a serving volley by Blake, no volley needed on that ace. But showing a little variety Eighth. early here. And that one carving away from Roddick. I said yesterday, Robbie Ginepri playing Roddick in the semifinals. You pointed out how often he went to Roddick's forehand in the deuce court and how much success he had with it. And we'll see if Blake uh, picked up Blake. on that and we'll employ that same strategy today. And certainly, if you get Roddick chipping the forehand return, that's something you want to see if you're Blake. to begin the match. Keys to the perfect First match game. from Lever 2000, Jim. And uh, for Andy Roddick, he needs to control this baseline against James Blake. He is not a fantastic retriever. He is at his best when he is dominating with his forehand. So those two play together because if he can return serve well, Andy that Roddick gets him in control of the point and sets him up. Now James Blake, returning Roddick's second serve is a beast. It is a massive kicker, so he needs to be at least neutral on the second serves, and then he needs to work his forehand, which is one of the biggest shots in tennis. Let's face it, if Roddick serves a high percentage of first serves, there's not much you can do. 
and he's been doing that in this tournament. Roddick has had an exceptional serving tournament so far. Roddick has not lost serve this week in Indianapolis in either singles or doubles. That's right. He's playing the doubles final mm -hmm. later today. And he and Bobby Reynolds going up against Paul Goldstein and Jim Thomas in an All-American affair. Yeah. But Roddick's first serve percentage, Ted, has been very, very high. That is a tough order to break his serve. It's so big. He can bomb it up in the 140s, but he's been showing nice variety this week as well. Oh. He's awfully close. Yeah. Of course, uh, this championship beginning the U.S. Open Series and all the way through the Open being played with electronic review. The players equipped with two challenges per set. No challenge employed there. There's Hawkeye giving us the clear view of that ball out. It's a little extra excitement in the game. It's innovation, of course, from the USTA. Striving to get the calls right, as well as the added entertainment value of the players having challenges. And the fans here get to, to sit in on it as well. There are video screens here that, that the fans get to see in real time with the players. When a player challenges the calls, the boys laugh at the, the let. Fans have enjoyed being let in on the action here. Mm -hmm. He's already hit over 140 so far. That last miss, 137. tell you, Ted, that's one shot that Roddick has employed as well. A little bit more than usual this week is the backhand down the line. Normally he's comfortable going cross-court with it, but that's an offensive shot, and you can see that Blake was out of position and caught off guard by that. One thing we'll, we'll touch on here and start talking more about is a new face in Andy Roddick's corner. Uh, Mr. Connors, anyone. I going to ask you about that, about that shot after. We remind you that as always, uh, the American Express program supports the U.S. Open and the U.S. Open Series. The Summer of Aces program is back. $50 donated by the American Express card to the USTA Tennis and Education Foundation's Aces for Kids initiative for each ace on stadium courts across all 10 U.S. Open Series tournaments. It's uh, over a half million dollars worldwide to date has been raised to support the growth of tennis on a global basis. Next ace in this match will hit 200 aces on center court here in Indianapolis for the week. Well, you, you referenced it. Between Wimbledon and this event, Andy Roddick spent a week in the beautiful town of Montecito, California, just outside of Santa Barbara, with Jimmy Connors. Home to one James Scott Connors. Watched yesterday, called uh, Andy. Andy said he got a call from Coach Connors right after the uh, his, game on. his match with Robbie Ginepri yesterday. Do you that backhand you're talking about? Do you see that as a as a possible well, Connors influence? That's a Connors shot. Okay, you know, Jimmy with his backhand stand well inside the baseline and and take it down the line, almost moving away from you so effectively. I, I, John Roddick, Andy's brother, is is the full time coach here, but getting a little mentor from a great champ like Jimmy. It's a great idea. Now there's so much insight that Jimmy can give mentally to Andy as well as technically. There's John Roddick, Andy's brother and a fine junior and collegiate player in his own right. But just the, the amount of confidence and swagger that Jimmy Connors has to this day. If you could just take a piece of that and add it to what Andy Roddick brings to, to the table, that's worth five, ten wins a year right there. Strong Andy serving Roddick. start. Three aces already for James Blake. Take your seats quickly, please. James Blake and Andy Roddick, it's warm Sorry. here, but 
compared to last year, this is like the Arctic Circle. It's actually a pretty comfortable day. And who would have ever thought, Jim, that when James Blake had his breakthrough win over Andy Roddick, it would be on grass. Exactly. Roddick is twice a finalist at Wimbledon. He'd won the Queens Club three years running going into that. But James Blake is a different player today. He's a confident player, and he's also a little bit more patient than he's been in the past. Uh, you, you've talked about already about Roddick's incredible serving week that he's had, and Roddick served that way in the match in Queens. He did. 77% first serves in, but James returned well when he was given that opportunity. You know, it's it's one break here or there. Obviously, that's all you need if, if you're able to hold your own serves. Roddick can apply so much pressure as a as a returner because he's holding serve. But if Blake can manhandle that serve, can flip that pressure on him. And watch Blake get aggressive on the second serve if he can. He'll step right in. Andy's won four, five points on his second serve so far, which you mentioned is a key for Blake. Mm -hmm. But Blake has been aggressive, which is what you want to see for James. He's stepping into it. He's not letting Rod Roddick dictate to him with that serve. He's trying to make something happen. The astonishing thing about that Queens Club match last month, is, as you said, Jim, Roddick served 77% for the match, one double fault. And Blake broke him three times on grass. Mm. Hey, well, so far, Roddick has shown some nice variety on that serve going into the body. Two minutes on. Now for the latest news on the summer of tennis in the United States, the U.S. Open Series and the road to Flushing. Check on NBCSports.com. Commentary from both Tracy Austin and Bud Collins all summer long. NBCSports.com. The American Express card's getting dinged so far. Big time. Dinged in the right way. For, all for the good. showing a displeasure at where his feet took him in that shot because his racket is way in front of the ball here. His feet are nowhere near it. Just did not get aggressive and catch that ball right. It's a little bit of a breeze today. Sometimes you can use that excuse in your head as, as a player, but James knew well enough that he just was lazy on that shot. Quickly corrects that to Four hands in tennis. And James Blake pulls that one down the line, just inside of the line. Well, that backhand though really does look different. Does. Erotic, even though Blake held his serve. American final in Indianapolis, as we had last year. Robbie Ginepri beat Taylor Dent. No! This year we've got the top two American men. Earlier this week, one of the most promising young Americans, Sam Query. Junior out of Southern California. Got a wild card here, won a round. He's done that two weeks in a row on the tour. So what about that American tennis? I tell you, you know, I was sitting here in the States watching television during the French Open, Wimbledon, reading the newspapers, looking on the internet. 
And a lot of cold serve. And three all. And we've got the U.S. Open Great. Series right in front of us starting this week. Ten tournaments between the men and the women. Bonus points are awarded to the top finishers. Of course, the winner this week will be the leader in the clubhouse. And, and there is a million-dollar bonus available. If you win the U.S. Open Series and the U.S. Open, you will collect $2.2 million, which is a pretty healthy sum. Kim Kleisters did that last year. Six ATP events. This is being the first comprised the U.S. Open Series. Four WTA events. Women will kick in starting tomorrow at Stanford. Trouble it's for Blake now at Love 30 with a double fault. And he's playing quickly here, not taking his time, right back up to the line. That is exactly the kind of tennis that Andy Roddick played when he was number one in the world right there. Firm return, big forehand. Love and then look at this little wrinkle. Follow it into the net in case it comes back. Good confidence and now three break points. And Roddick a little high on that slice there with his legs. Didn't really absorb the shot with his legs. He needs to be down on this one. He's a little bit erect. And you're not going to get much done there. It's just too handsy. Oh, and Roddick. He handled that serve out wide to his forehand and ends up with the first break in the first set of this championship. In Indianapolis, finals of the RCA championships. Tony Roddick and James Blake, they met last summer during the U.S. Open Series in Washington. Roddick with the victory. That's right. He's beaten Blake twice in finals. In 2002, Houston, you see where he beat Sampras. That's a clay, that's the U.S. Clay Court Championships. Right. It's the only time in Andy Roddick's career that he's been a tournament winner in both singles and doubles, something he's trying to do here today. That's right. doubles conversation that's ongoing in tennis. I asked Andy today, I said, you know, just tell me what it's been like playing singles and doubles with the new doubles rules this week. And Andy said, it's been great. He said, I haven't spent more than an hour on court in any of the doubles matches. And for those who are obviously advocating the changes, trying to get more singles players to, to play doubles, Roddick would be an endorsement for that. Exactly right. This game has become so physical for the players that to play both singles and doubles, it can be very taxing. So those changes, simplifying the set scoring, no ad scoring, faster matches, third set, super tie break, keeps the players, limits the amount of time that they can be out there and makes it a true addition rather than a negative for a singles player. And further endorsement would be that when Roddick played on Friday here, played a doubles match on the grandstand court, it was packed. Mm -hmm. well, that's what they want. They want Tennis fans want to see the top players playing, whether it's singles or doubles. <laughs> wow. Game Roddy. A little flair from James Blake, who we know has a lot of it, going behind the back here, really conceding this game. Roddy Gates won five games. A little flamboyance. James still frustrated, I think, over that 
break of serve in the three all game. We're proud today to be bringing you the RCA championships in beautiful high definition courtesy of the good folks at RCA. James came out here in the warm up. He was smiling at people on the stands. He was pretty, uh, pretty relaxed, but he's ever since game time here, he's been a little bit more agitated. But this is a guy who's got so much perspective after what he's climbed out of in his life. Now in the second phase of his career, this is yesterday, of course, against Melise. Had a tough second set, came back strong in the third. Came from a broken neck injury and followed that up with shingles and then the untimely passing of his father from cancer, Thomas. Now this is a guy who has a lot of game, James Blake, and now he's got that perspective and maturity to match. And it's, a, it's really reflecting in his on. results. And you look at this backhand shot, and, and Jim, do you buy into the theory that uh, I've thrown it out there is that and Andy Roddick can look at Blake. There's an ace. Well, we'll get back to him. Let's see. Is Andy going to challenge? Hold on. Let's see if Andy's going to challenge. He's looking. He's looking. And no, <laughs> no challenge. So Blake with his fifth ace. And he does get the hold. Roddick will serve for the first set when we come back. Two weeks from today, the NFL returns to NBC. The Hall of Fame game from Canton, Ohio, between the Oakland Raiders and the Philadelphia Eagles. Two weeks from tonight. And of course, that culminates a weekend in which John Meck will be inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame for his great contributions as a coach once upon a time. Thank you. And, of course, we'll welcome Al Michaels and John Madden officially to the NBC family August 6th. serving for the first set and Jim let me pick that up you know, watching Andy this year 15 long. it's been thought you know that he could look at a James Blake who has improved his forehand dramatically improved his serve dramatically at 25 26 as something of a, of a model to say okay I can get better valid uh, there's no one that you need to look past other than Andre Agassi look no further than that for someone who really changed the course of his career at a much later age than Roddick at 23. Now Roddick is, was agitated yesterday after the match and really unleashed in the press conference oh, about the negativity he's felt about uh, his career lately from the media. Feels like people have turned on him. Nothing winning won't take care of, but you know, Andy says, look, I'm just 23 years old, guys. You guys are writing me off like my career's over. He says, I'm, I'm, uh, far from finish. You just have to check my results. Well, he's mixing and yeah. serves beautifully. That previous ace was only 106. There the bomb in 132. And one break gives Andy Roddick the first set as he tries to win his third RCA championship. First set to Andy Roddick at the RCA championships in Indianapolis. Roddick just better across the board here. Better first service percentage. Uh, one less ace, but uh, did not face a break point. And pretty clean tennis, really, from both players when you look at it on the winner's and unforced error side. But Roddick, a little bit more successful on those second Five, serve returns. Been, 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 been. So a little earlier, we were started to talk to you. You were watching fervently the French Open in Wimbledon. We are discussing that second frequently asked question, what about American yeah, tennis? Mm -hmm. And I have taken a lot of calls from reporters wanting to really play up that story. And the thing that I keep telling them is, guys, U.S. Open last year, we had Ginepri in the, in the semis. Blake played the epic against Agassi in the quarters. Agassi, of course, into the finals. And we all know Andre is retiring at, at, at the end of this summer. But they're forgetting very quickly these two guys right here, plus Ginepri. The numbers don't lie. Look, we, we got blown out at Wimbledon. We got blown out of the French Open. So you can't deny that, but you also can't judge these guys based on two tournaments. You have to have a little patience and some perspective here. These are young guys who can make big moves forward like Blake has done in the last year. And I think Roddick could be poised for one 
for himself right now. I, I had a conversation with John Roddick in Australia, and he, he asked me candidly, he said, Jim, what do you think about Andy's game? I, I, I want your opinion. I said, well, look, this is the way I see it, and I say it on the air, and I say it in private, and I say to anyone who'll ask, I think Andy has planted about 60 to 70 percent of his potential. And I want you to take that as a positive. And I've told Andy that, too. That's a positive. Think about Federer and Nadal, your guys who you're looking at right now and wondering how am I going to get back into the, the, to the competition with those guys. There's not a lot of upside room for those guys to move. They're pretty much playing at the max of what they have capability-wise. I mean, Roddick starts implementing shots like that off of a great return of serve. That was 122 mile an hour first serve wide. I mean, this is excellent tennis from Blake, but Roddick is just dominating him here right here. You know, if Roddick can put all these elements together that he's not really had in this game, he can really accelerate the process. There's a lot of room for Roddick to grow. So Blake with his sixth ace. Of course, this week starts the summer of tennis in America, and it culminates with a spectacle in New York. Two weeks of magnificent tennis, the U.S. Open, and as always, over 100 hours of coverage on USA Network beginning Monday, August 28th. As we say, it's all tennis, all the time. Proud to have USA Network now in the NBC Universal family. All right, so synergy, right? Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So is Jimmy Connors the guy that you think can get Roddick from 60% to closer to 100%? Sure he can. Connors is a guy who used every last ounce of his ability and got the most out of it. Oh. Awkward miss from Roddick there, but an easy shot nonetheless. Yeah, look. Roddick has been working hard. He's in shape. He's ready to go. It's it's the minor adjustments, the mental adjustments that he needs to make when he's in match. But there are also some refinements that he needs to make in the practice court. Uh, his volley can get a lot better. His transition game, understanding how to to use his power to get to net for easy shots that he's going to make nine times out of ten. We just saw that one out of ten that you'll miss. You know, increase his chances. going to understand what it takes at the highest level, it's going to be Connors. Okay. Blake, this is a nice transition move from Blake, yeah. who cuts that angle off and is looking to get in afterwards. That's something that Roddick hasn't implemented in this game too much. to get the break points. I and mean, again, you just look at James and look at the backhands he's hit in the last two points. And that's been the, the weak link for Blake in his career has been his backhand now, but you see that with confidence, Roddick has not Thank been you. broken in this tournament. And this is a chance for that to change. Oh. And he's broken. Backhand by Blake. And there was your key second serve return for Blake. He stepped in, and there was some authority on that backhand. You know, Blake, we know Blake has the massive forehand, but if he's going to start taking rips successfully on, on the backhand side, he's just a whole different level of player. He starts to look like number five in the world consistently if, that, if that's the case. Up the first break of serve all week against Andy Roddick.
Tim Thienel. Volley from Blake dangerously close to the line. No challenge from Roddick. We're at 15 all. So T15. James Blake is the anti-Nadal. He is just playing at rapid fire pace. He doesn't have any sleeves on his shoulders to wipe his brow with, so he's just got to keep going. That's some nice athleticism from both guys there. Roddick dunks that one away. And a great guess so on gone. that overhead from Blake just to stay in the point, but then Roddick backs it up with a chip charge slam dunk. Excellent defense, forcing Roddick into this low, difficult volley that he carves up beautifully into the corner. And look at Blake canvassing this court. Man, defense everywhere out here. Time. Dude. Break point down. I mean, are you kidding me? Rada covering the court. Gave himself a chance. second series and take healthy cuts. Both of these guys have their own charitable foundations that do great work, but there's no given out here. Mm. It is all take right now. has a lot of bite on it this week. It's staying lower than I've seen it. I still don't think it's a great shot for him to be using consistently because it allows a player like Blake, if he can get around to his forehand, to take control. And it's not an offensive shot for, for Roddick. It's a neutral shot at best. He got away with it there. Got an error from Blake, but I still don't think long term that's a, an employable strategy. So you'd like to see him drive through the back end, as we've seen on a few occasions here. Look, if he had the foot speed of Blake, then Roddick could, could hit a shot like that and get away with it because he could get back on offense from defense. But that shot's going to lead to playing defense, which is not what Andy is looking for or should be looking for. He should be trying to impose that big frame he's got with big power on people. Great point now. This is uh, an uncharacteristic miss from Blake. To say the least. Blake has 
we go here. That's three great points he saved. And that time backs up the nice volley. And Roddick knows it right away that that lob's not going to get it done. <laughs> Looking for a little help, but the help came on the point before, not on that one. It's not that Roddick played any bad points in those break points oh. either. Blake has just stepped it up a notch.